Welcome to the Spin Wiz Comic Show. Whoa. From Raleigh, North Carolina. Join us for exclusive interviews with the publishers, bringing you the newest titles in indie comics, web comics, movies, and more. No way. Way. And now, here's your host, Jeff Palumbo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. I am always your, well, I'm always your host, and as always, I'm your host. Both of those things. Jeff Palumbo, welcome to the Spin Wiz Comic Show. If it's your first time coming in, well, welcome. If it's not, welcome also. Um, we have a great show for you tonight. The gentleman I have on is actually another person that has come from Source Point Press. Uh, the reason he and I have met, uh, we actually just met recently, but I have known who he is because of all the work he's been doing at Source Boy Press. Um, and, you know, Greg Wright talked about him, and then Bob Saley talked about him. And after that, I'm like, well, if you know those two guys, I, you know, we have to have you on the show. And the amount of work he is doing right now and what he has done is just massive. And, like, uh, we have only had one other colorist on, and this gentleman is just like taking to the nth level. It's possible he's working while we're actually interviewing him um, because he does not sleep. Like I'm pretty sure he can't. And if he's working with Bob Saley, well, God knows what's going to happen. I don't know. I don't know what kind of person he is. He must be a saint. Um, even though Bob is amazing. We're not talking about Frank Gogol here. So anyway, um, I want to bring him in because you came here to see him, not me. Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Nugent. How are you, man? Hey, <laughs> how's it going? Good, man. So I would, was explaining to everybody that was on the show that you and I have just recently met, and we actually met. Greg had brought you up. Yeah. Um, and then, but you and I connected when Bob Sally was on, but you yeah. also know Bill Stoddard. Yeah. So these are all people that I knew, and I'm like, I know names, and they're like, yeah, but do you know do you know Rob Nugent? And I'm like, not personally. They're like, no. you should. Yeah. And, and when somebody, when those three guys are like, you should know somebody, I, I figure <laughs> I listen. So you're like super okay. popular. Uh, at the moment, but hopefully that continues. Well, past this. you're working on. Uh, and to start, congratulations on Broken gar gar yeah. Gargoyles coming out today, right? Yeah. I'm super excited about that, it. That's awesome. Um, we will link Broken Gargoyles in the chat. We don't have Broken Gargoyles yet on Spinwiz Comics. It's too too soon. Uh, it's too new. We have to go through all the print sales and stuff like that first. But once that hump is over, Travis and Josh will get it to me. We'll load it up, and I'll blast it out to everybody because it's something you want to definitely want to check out. Um, mm -hmm. But you have not just done Broken Gargoyles. Like, you are infamous obviously outside of source point press as well but oh, cool. you and you and you and stan yak have been at it yeah. for quite some time right yeah uh well we started working together we got i'm i was work i was like messing around with this writer and she had this huge story arc planned and she hired stan and then i said i'd color it and mess around with letters i'm not really good with letters but we, everyone was just beginning so we were all trying it out and then uh, i moved to new york and the writer had like a comic signing at a, like a small comic shop mm -hmm. in downtown manhattan like lower manhattan and that's and we wish stan could make it but obviously he's in russia so <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> but, it's a little bit of a trip yeah yeah and that's really when I started really working with Stan because he was then working for like bullets and angels for this random company. And he was like, this colorist isn't good. And so I was like, I'll do a test page and see if they like me over this other guy. And then they did. So that brought me into that. And I think it was called master plot comics and it was kind of a disaster <laughs> after a certain point, but that really just, and I met Stephanie Maynard there. Mm -hmm. as well and we're still we're all still working together but that company just fell apart and we all kind of just left it and so we're doing i'm doing well no stephanie's doing aeonian yes yeah i was staying in me yep and i think rob jones yep at the letter yeah and we just the fourth one the third one just went out 
yeah, the Kickstarter was successful, yes, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Like, crushed it yet again. Yeah, and uh, the next one, I think, is going to be in October, beginning of October or something. Wow, there. that is a fast turnaround for a series. I mean, for an independent series, that is really yeah. quick. Yeah, people seem to like it. It's a good horror story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and Rocket Studio, uh, Rocketing Studios is great, too. Like. Tony yeah. and all those guys are awesome. I I haven't really met or interacted with those people, but they, I if they have Annie on, they're my friend. So yeah, <laughs> I'll give you my word that they are fantastic for sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. So when you're doing like, let's talk a little bit more about how, what some of the titles you are that you have worked on. Okay. And then let's get into the fact of because you are fast. So you are known. I asked around about you. <laughs> And you're well known for doing okay. <laughs> amazing crisp colors and the fact that you fly yeah. through content. That's okay. Well, that's a good reputation to have. I would think so. In the comic industry, <laughs> but, that is hard to find. Yeah. Well, I've been working for a couple of years as a storyboard colorist. It's like a part time freelance job for mm-hmm. Outlines Inc. in Manhattan. And we do we do those like prescription drugs. On commercial, we storyboard storyboard those. Ooh, the fun so stuff! You can, uh, it's the guy who drew like the Protector comic book. Oh wow, Chris! I can never say his last name. Yeah, I'm not going to try. Naturally or something. It's very mm-hmm. Italian, but he does all the drawings, and then we he has like a team of colorists come in and p- patch everything together. And so that has really helped me, like going quick, finding the shadow and the light really as fast as possible, turn out these storyboards. And then we also do like composites for HBO, AMC for like their promo shoots. Mm-hmm. So we've done a lot of like Comedy Central. We've done like MTV, like reality TV shows, <laughs> just anyone really who needs a drawing. And did you get into that because you were a comic book colorist or was it the other way around? Did you go to school for that and you just happened to do coloring for comics? Uh, I went to school for painting, like an oil oh, paint. Wow. Oh, that's right. Acrylic right. Mm-hmm. at the Chicago Art Institute. And they were developing a comic section for that school. So I took like all the comic classes, but they didn't have a degree in comics. Mm-hmm. So, but... I, I was coloring comics. I was like producing, I was making my own comics for class and stuff. And then I just got, I would start like practicing on like famous artists that I liked, like Lee Bermejo and Jay Lee and all those people. Holy and then messing around with all that. And then going to portfolio reviews pretty much at New York Comic Con. <laughs> yeah. And it's super expensive. To live in New York City. Oh, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet it is. So you have to have those wheels turning. Otherwise, you're like, uh, yeah. I guess we're moving somewhere else. Yeah, <laughs> it got a lot of hands in different pots, as they say. Yeah, for sure. But, so, oh, go no, on. no, 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 you, 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 keep, you keep talking. Okay. Keep bringing it. But the storyboard, I've only been doing for like a year or two, but I've been coloring comics for like five six years when i met stan pretty much and so it's just like helping me move quick and honing the skill i guess Mm -hmm. with fast pace and how because it's he draw chris draws really realistically so that kind of (laughs) helps so it's just kind of putting a flat color on with a tiny bit of highlights everywhere and then some wrinkles but but that's mainly helped, and oh, geez, I don't know. What else. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a lot. Being a a classically trained painter, I mean, are yeah. you are you using digital now, right? Or do you also yeah. jump over and use the same paint styling on digital? Uh, uh or did I say that is, incorrectly? No, this is gonna be weird because, but I literally just bought like a desk tablet or display tablet that i could draw on Mm -hmm. and before that i was just using a mouse oh my gosh really for three years yeah (laughs) just 
I didn't like those tablets on the table. I didn't like draw, using those and staring at the monitor. So I just used a mouse and doing selections and all that kind of stuff. I like to kind of use the, the rough brushes to give a little tiny bit of texture. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think it kind of looks like wet paint kind of, but that's the only real thing that I'm biased towards is more textured coloring instead of the sharp, harsh edges of like lassoing and then doing a gradient, I guess. <laughs> well, being that, I mean, there, I don't know uh, many colorists, so I would assume that uh, like uh, a couple of the people that I know just learned, like they were either letterers or yeah. they, they had kind of grown up drawing them and coloring at the same time. And they're like, no, we're just going to concentrate on coloring because okay. they always have work. But they don't. Yeah. They weren't classically trained like you. I mean, you went to an art institute for painting. Mm -hmm. So has that helped you? Do you think in comics, or have you kind of had to shut part of that off and be like, I'd still love to paint, but this is paying the bills. Yeah, I think it's kind of different because in comics, the colors are kind of exaggerated, to like very kind of saturated to somewhat a crazy amount, like. Superman's blue suit is always blue and you can kind of change it depending on the atmosphere of the panel, but you really need him to stand out out of everything. Mm -hmm. So you want that blue and the red cape to stand out. But I was trained to like just <laughs> everything's kind of like gray tones, like skin tones in the daylight. It's kind of a grayish kind of, and I'm, I'm more, I like darker palettes, <laughs> kind of creepier palettes. That's why I, I got up my start in like horror comics, I guess. <laughs> so you must be loving Broken Gargoyles. Yeah, it's fun. I think Stan said it was too colorful. <laughs> and I said, shut up, Stan. <laughs> you shut your face and keep drawing. I'll, keep, mm -hmm. I'll, be, I'll be the colorist on this. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> yeah, but... But yeah, it was uh, like a nighttime scene and the gun was flashing. So it was like a dark blue sky and then a bright orange that reflected on everything. So it was like very color contrast. I love which it. Helps, makes it stand out. Yeah. <laughs> and Jalen Warner, Warner just popped in and said hello. Hey, what up? <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, an another one, another person that calls you the Nuge. Oh, that's a good. <laughs> I that like was my it. older brother's nickname. Oh, really? Yeah, because like, he's like six years older than me. So, <laughs> so now that you're more awesome than him, can you take it? I guess so. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would call him and tell him, be like, listen, I, uh, I was granted the, nick the nickname tonight, so. Uh... Yeah. I don't think he'd be upset. I mean, well, you never know. Some people, uh, they keep those things around. Yeah. Uh, so when you're coloring, I think you bring up a good point. And again, I apologize for all these questions that are like this. It's just the fact that That's I fine. very rarely have a colorist on. But, yeah. And I usually talk to either, you know, writers or pencils or pencilers and inkers. But yeah. with colorist, are you in your mind, even though it comes from Stan, you kind of see what it's like. You almost have to put your pl you pit your spot into almost like real life and imagine the color scheme, right? Yeah. I kind of, I always go in asking if they have any details they want me to like keep a certain color. And I look at the script for like daytime, nighttime, dusk, dawn. And then I always figure out the light sources first. So I know how like if there's going to be like if he's standing in front of a car and their headlights are on he's going to be like a dark figure and it looks like kind of an outline behind them but if if i know a gun's going off and it's nighttime i can play with the the really orange flash or the yellow flash of the muzzle of the gun and then kind of make that but yeah i try to always get a tiny bit of reflective light so it looks kind of rounded or three-dimensional so it's not just like a flat color, just, but yeah, 
I sometimes I don't know what what I'm gonna do when I see the page. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's start here. And those then we'll work those over pages it. take a lot longer because I'm just messing around trying to figure it out. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure that I, I I can't even imagine. Like when I when I'm writing, I try to envision the way the scene is going to look. Yeah. But I leave it up to my colorist unless I, again, if I have something very specific I'm trying to get across, I'll mention it. Yeah. You know, like make explosion a mix of red with yellow tips uh, just because okay. that's the way I see it. But yeah. normally I let the colorist just fly at it. Be like, listen, you know what fire looks like. Knock yourself <laughs> out. Um, or if it's dark out and there's a, a lamp, a light post, you know that it looks like there are lines on it and how it disperses, you know, from yeah. there. So are do you, I know that you work with Stan quite a bit, but on Broken Gargoyles specifically with Bob, did he give you any notes like that? Or was he just kind of like, uh, here you go. <laughs> Knock yourself out. <laughs> I think he was, he gave me the script and said, uh, he was like, Stan, just talk to Stan. <laughs> Pretty much. And if he had like a specific saying he wanted, mm -hmm. he would, he would tell me like, I want that his jacket to be green because it's like an army jacket kind of like small stuff like that. Like I might mess up and he's like, Oh, that was supposed to be a certain color. Like, okay, I'll just change it real quick. But other than that, it's just me and Stan kind of fighting up over it. <laughs> That's great. I can't Im he, imagine your conversations. Yeah. He's straight to the point. He's like, why did you do that? And I'm like, well, because that's where the light's coming from. And <laughs> it's hitting him this way. He's like, I don't like it. And I'm like, well, get used to it, I guess. <laughs> but <laughs> once it, it's, once pretty, again, it's keep... a pretty, we josh with each other, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you kind of have to. But we, like we had a, yeah. Like we had a moment earlier, like a couple days ago or a week ago. He, he was like, there's like a fortune teller and like a, a photo comes out of New York City. And he's like, and I colored it like a actual photograph. And he's like, this is the 1915s. There's no colored pictures in it. And I was like, but we can have flying submarines. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, obviously, right? Yeah, and he was, and then I just changed it because it wasn't a big deal. But <laughs> that's pretty funny. So, how did you end up hooking up with Source Point? Like, did, was it Stan that brought you with that, or did you know that yeah. those guys first? I think uh, it was Stan. He was working on Monstrous Baba Yaga, the one-off. Mm-hmm. Yep, with Greg, right? A year and a half ago or something. And I think that was his first one with Source Point Press. And then we finished it. And then I think he was starting to work on Broken Gargoyles, who had that a Marco. I can't, I can never say his last name, but I can't say a different either. colorist. And, yeah, but he's awesome. I love. <laughs> But then they asked me to come in and help out because I think he was working a bit slow or something. I don't really remember. But I came in for like the last like 10 pages or something and finished. And then I guess they just kept me on board yeah. <laughs> for the next two issues. Nothing so wrong with more money, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And is that the way and you, then you hook I up? Think we've, I'm sorry, go ahead. And then we have, and then we did Witch Hunt 1, 2, and 3, and we're working on the fourth one. The Broken Gargoyles 3 we're working on right now. Wait, you're working on three issues at the same time? No, uh, Witch Hunt 1 through 3 are, are done. Oh, I was like, holy cow, <laughs> you, you are busy. Good lord, and then, man. No, <laughs> we're working on Witch Hunt 4 and Broken Gargoyles 3 oh, okay. right now. All right, good. We're finishing those up. <laughs> so is that how you ended up hooking up with Bill Stoddard and Vulture Comics as well? Was it with Stan or did you know Bill? Uh, no, Stan brought me in too with Bill. And then me and Bill became like really close friends. Like I went to his wedding in Maine like a couple of years ago. Holy cow. 
and he's like a really good guy. And, he is a good dude. And I like talk. We like, I he came. I think that was the first time I met him. No, we went to Boston Comic Con before that, just to walk around <laughs> and hang out. But he's a good dude, and Stan brought me in, and then he runs a lot of. We like brainstorm ideas about the world of nomad that he lives in mm-hmm. and I'm, I'll tell him if I don't like an idea and he'll be like, okay. <laughs> and then, but he's a good guy and we're still working together. We're trying to get nomad two done. It's been a long time, a bumpy road, but he's become a really good friend and, uh, and I haven't, and then Bob's Tally, you know, I just met him through Stan again. Uh, Stan just brings me along, I guess. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that, man. And let, let's not let's not yeah. l- let Bill know that we're saying nice things about him. Oh yeah, <laughs> we got to keep him on his toes. If he knows we like him too much, he's gonna be like, "Well, I, I can go to Jeff for anything, and we're gonna yeah. put him, we're gonna put you up on the homepage of Spin Whiz, and because I can, yeah. and all that stuff. We we just can't have that. Yeah, that's true. We gotta. Keep yeah. them. Yeah. So, keep them Bill, if, if you're watching, <laughs> if you're watching, Bill, none of this is true. Okay. None. Of I think it. he goes to bed at nine thirty now because he has to get up at three a.m. or something. Oh my gosh! Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy cow! He just got like a new job. <laughs> Good lord! And the hours are, but he gets off of work by noon or something. Oh, first shift. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. So I think, yeah, but but he's liking it so far. So that's good. That's good. So what else does your Rolodex expand into from your coloring world? Because I know you've been on a whole Uh, bunch of stuff in comics. Yeah, I'm working with this like rock band in from California. They're called Dead by Midnight. And they have, they've, we've made three issues for them. Uh, and they have animated comics of it. Oh damn! And it's a it's a kind of a crazy story. Like they're a band. They're like they've been like the opening is they've been drinking after their gig, and they're, they stumble out of a bar, and someone like tries to rob them, and then they get like their manager teleports them into the future <laughs> to save their lives. And then they're like on a journey to save the, get back to the past where they were at in the alley. And then, but they have to, they have to do a lot of stuff, but it's all like connected to their music, kind of like Coheed and Cambria did, Mm -hmm. I guess. But they were, they're pretty cool. They had a, like a concert a couple of years ago. It flew me out to in California, which was fun. Oh, damn. And then I got to meet uh, the artist. He was from Britain. So that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, but that, I think that's, we did the three story arc. So I think they're resting for a little bit. And then I got an, I'm working on with Caleb Thusat. Or however you say it for his next pitch, I think he wants to pitch it to Source Point Press and some more indie places. So I think we're just working on the five first five pages at the moment. Cool. Uh, you uh, you have a question in chat. Do you want to take it? I'm going to read it out to you. Yeah. What is it? So uh, Paul Limjenko. Paul, let me know mm-hmm. if I said that right or not. Uh, it says, hey, Robert, Robert uh, Broken Gargoyles looks great, which I agree. Well done. Uh, not just yeah. for comics, but do you have Thanks. color cords that you like working with consistently, or do you use your intuition and color as you please? What a great question. Yeah. I'm more of a, of a painter, so I like to pick my color every time. I don't have swatches all laid out for me that I reuse. So I go in and pick my color with the color picker every time. 
Did that answer it? <laughs> I mean, I, I think I, we'll, we'll come back. Sometimes it, it, Facebook is weird in that it doesn't automatically post. It, it could take oh, it could okay. take a little while, and I think there's a six second lag. So, if it did okay. or didn't, Paul, feel free to keep commenting. <laughs> and and I, I have Robert until he decides to turn that light off and disappear. So, um, <laughs> yeah. ba- back to your uh, your original thing, mm-hmm. what you're working on. What else do you have going on? Because you you're stacked until. December. Uh, do you have other cool stuff coming up that you can talk yeah. about, or is uh, it all NDA? I think I can talk about. It. I think it's all like indie kind of area. Nothing mm-hmm. with the big guys. So I'm doing an independent comic called Hand That Feeds. I don't think they have a publisher yet, but they they hired me, so I'm coloring those pages. Yeah, they're paying, <laughs> and then. Yeah, Anion 4, when that gets going. And then Broken Gargoyles 4 through 6 is in the schedule. And then uh, I think it's called The Cleanse Forward. It's like a zombie invasion kind of book. I think me and Stan just did a cover for it or a pinup for them. It's like a tech, he has like a tech warrior suit that he fights zombies with. <laughs> so that'll be, that's what I'm kind of looking forward to that one. I can dig it. <laughs> and so, then just random commissions here and there. Uh, which is, again, plus you have a full time job working for the studio or the agency. Yeah, it's all remote now. So it's kind of, it's kind of nice. <laughs> right, not not having to drive uh, through the city or well, I mean, if it's subways, I guess it's not so. Yeah. Bad, but mm-hmm. um, so Paul's coming back, and then I'm, I get Jalen's got another one. Says thanks, Robert. Okay. I get it. Kind of uh, like having tubes of paint that you work with. It's like you have yeah. digital tubes of paint to stick yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, that pronunciation is closer than most. <laughs> I'm glad that I was close with Lumjemko. I mean, it, it's, it's, well, it sounds, Ital- I mean, Palumbo is Italian and people botch yeah. my last name. Like it's <laughs> going out of style. So I try to get all the Italian last names, it, unless Limgenko for whatever <laughs> reason is not Italian. I apologize. Yeah. Um, Jalen. It's fun to just, oh, go for it. No, no go, go ahead. We, we have all night. I just say it's, it would be fun to say it in Russian, like Limgenko. Oh, it could, it could be Russian. <laughs> yeah. If it were, Paul, is it Russian? If it is, I apologize. But usually, if it ends in a vowel, it can it can yeah. really go over way. Paul Limjemko. <laughs> See, that's more Italian. I guess I guess yeah. that's what I stick with. Um, mm-hmm. Jalen coming in saying, "Does that mean if you prefer certain color palettes, or do you prefer certain color palettes, or does it depend on, like, do you gravitate to certain color palettes, or is it again, like we were talking about, you kind of look at the scene, and it could be any yeah. type of palette that you like, or do you?" Kind of say, well, this is my my skin tone palette. This is usually what I used to offset it with, and then everything else is fill in. Uh, uh, for it depends on the time of day or what kind of lights hitting it. So if it's like a yellow light, I'll put like a purpley shadow on everything, just to make the yellower yellow pop a little more, mm-hmm. and the shadows sink down. And for orange, I'll do like a bluish shadow if it's an orange highlight but i don't really like green shadow so i'll do a, like a teal <laughs> if it's a red highlight a red a teal shadow for a red highlight but though i don't get those that much but but for skin i'll definitely use like a purpley shadow no matter what because it just looks nicer from to me <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I get it. Oh, it's a Spanish version of a Chinese full name, but I'm Filipino. Oh, oh <laughs> it's Limhenko. Limhenko. Ah, oh, oh, cool. Paul, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Although I never would have guessed all of that. So, <laughs> yeah. my Paul, my apologies, but uh, that, that is actually well, but that's actually one of the coolest layouts I've ever heard of yeah. a name. Uh, yeah. I mean, 
Mine's, true. mine's just straight up Italian. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. I, I guess mean, I'm boring now, I suppose. Mine is just British, so whatever. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just like, all right, all right whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about do you draw as well because you have a background in art? Or do you, are you were you strictly strictly painting? I did like I had like a sketchbook. I didn't. I I I had to take like figure drawing. Right. I didn't have to, but I took it. But and that was fun. It was more like oil pastels and stuff like that. But I I don't really. My anatomy is kind of off because I essentially oh <laughs> I elongate features that I like more like I'll just draw like a huge nose because I want to <laughs> or tiny eyes or something it's really cartoony but comics you need anatomy and <laughs> all that kind of stuff yeah well when you do uh, have you ever done an art like have you created art with you know actual paintings and things like that and show them and you, you live in New York City so I th I assume that that happens that there's showings of your art and work and you try they to sell it? Have... <laughs> I don't do that. Oh, okay. But <laughs> I don't. I have a, like, I've pretty much stopped oil painting since I got out of college. Like, I would dabble here and there, but I was mostly just digital Photoshop. Oh, okay. So, oh. but I do have... Like a ridiculously a ridiculous amount of paintings at home in Kansas. My mom has them, and my brother. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. So What's up? you're from Kansas. Yeah. You went to school in Chicago, and now you're in mm -hmm. New York. Did you just not yeah. like? I mean, maybe you were in. <laughs> I mean. Usually that's not the thing that happens, but were you in a small town in Kansas just to be stereotypical? Yeah, I was in a, a town called Newton, Kansas. It had like a 16,000 population. I'd say that's small, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think my senior year I took five art classes and I, was, I just had to take English and history. So. <laughs> And then, have you heard of like the scholastic, like art thing? Yeah. Uh huh. My mom was an art teacher. Yeah, I t I got three silver medals at the national level. Holy crap! So for a painting, a sculpture in my portfolio. So. And that's how you got into Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> like, did you, did they, did you even have to submit paperwork at that point in time? Or by getting that, they're just, Chicago's like, or any school's like, hey, do you want to come to our school? Yeah, I had to submit. And, and I think Kansas City Art Institute was trying really hard to recruit me, but my brother was already going to Chicago Art Institute as well. So I was just going to go there and like hang out with my brother. <laughs> So your brother's an artist also? Yeah, he he kind of, we took like the same path, it, it seemed like. But then we went our own separate ways after college, it seemed like. But I went towards comics and I, he went like the more religious route and started doing like Christian paintings and stuff like that. Hey, to each their own. Yeah. <laughs> and as but, long as the money's coming in, that's all that matters. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and my mom is a journalist at, in a small town, a photographer. So we would always chase, like we hear like a siren. She's like, what's that? 
we would follow it to like a burning house and she would take pictures. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, not awesome that there's a fire or an ambulance, but awesome that your no. mom's doing it. I can just, I can picture her hearing something, do a Yui, like a yeah. strong skid in the middle of the street and coming back to go after it at a 90 miles per hour. That's amazing. Yeah. She's a single mom with three kids. So mm -hmm. <laughs> we're like, what's happening? Yeah. She's spinning that wood, that woody so, around. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Uh, so Bob <laughs> Sally in the house now, by the way. Oh. What's up? And he says, this is the first time I've set eyes on Robert Nugent. Yeah, we've never actually met. We always miss each other just a, just a tiny bit. <laughs> so you've only, wait a minute, you've only seen each other through my show? Yeah. Every time I go to a con, to the Source Point Press book like place, he's never there. <laughs> and then I don't go back later so because <laughs> i'm doing stuff <laughs> uh jaylen says that's cool says it sounds like you're and like you're using a color i wheel. think he was doing yeah i love that color wheel mm -hmm. she says that so sorry i didn't mean i didn't mean to cut you off wait a minute bob says you live yeah. in the same city now <laughs> oh no not yet i'm moving into cambridge in may and i think he lives in boston so we'll be in the same area around may i was supposed to move this year but the coronavirus just really doesn't work out for me <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's also true so yeah. with, with corona have you been stuck inside because obviously new york city was yeah. like one of the epicenters that Cuomo's like, yeah. hey, shut your cake hole and stay in your house. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'm just staying inside. And I have two roommates who are just staying inside, too. Like, we just don't want to go outside. <laughs> and there's just people with no masks on walking around. Like, nothing's happening. And it's kind of it's kind of scary, but whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna try to not say anything about that just because yeah i'm not gonna say it <laughs> at this point the the whether you're pro mask or anti mask it's become a political thing and yeah i, I know i promised myself a long time ago that this show wouldn't be that outlet yeah um, but we can have another show on a different channel and i can yeah i can do all sorts of fun stuff um and i've been in new york city before because i'm actually from syracuse new york Oh, nice. And Manhattan's fun. People don't know, at least a lot of people that I, I went to Oswego State and then I went got my MBA from Syracuse. But mm -hmm. people don't know, if you're not from New York, that New York City is like six hours away from Syracuse. It's not like it's like no. New York is New York City. <laughs> There's the New York is a small is chunk gigantic. of an entire state. Yeah. yeah. It's like the bottom piece. <laughs> yeah yeah and opposite and then to you is new york Canada. is massive yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it, it is huge no politics and comics fellas that's what i'm talking about mm -hmm. jaylen mm -hmm. i i need to, <laughs> i i wish i could give you like a high five in the chat jaylen <laughs> because i agree can you wave at him um i i liked it i, I put the like but there's no like okay. wave functionality and i can't uh, like i can't do much more than that so Jalen, okay. Jalen, just know that I'm high five, high five for you, Jalen. High five. Uh, because I agree, and I'm so sick of politics anyway. I just, blech. yeah. Um, <laughs> which again, comics being escapism. Did you read and read comics when you were growing up, or was it just one of the mediums that you just ended up kind of gravitating towards? Uh, what? When I was a sophomore in college, I met a group of friends that I'm still in contact with. I th he lives in New Jersey now, but he lent me the long Halloween <laughs> and I read it that night till I stayed up reading it. And then I just kept borrowing books from him. And then we, we started going comic cons. I think I've been to 11 New York comic cons since oh, then. Damn. I guess that's one. 
I fell in love with comics was the long Halloween, but then it was just a whole, a different world. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, how did you transition know. Know, knowing that you're a painter into comics? Like, how did you say, you know what? I can color these. I'm good. <laughs> well, I made like a, I was in like an animation class in high school and I did like, it was pretty much like a motion comic, like I kind of, but it was like a five minute long motion comic. And I was like, oh, this is just half the process. I can do that easily. <laughs> and then like friends would ask for help and stuff. I mean, I would help them out pretty much doing it. And then I would make these like motion comics that weren't really motion like a hand would move slightly <laughs> but pretty much just comic books and then after that i guess i was kind of got tired of doing all the drawings because <laughs> i would have to take so many photo references for every image oh yeah i'm sure and, uh, yeah but i love coloring <laughs> so well you're amazing at it I mean, Bob Saley is not easy to please, and he can't say enough nice things about you. So, Bob Saley, <laughs> you know, I mean, take <laughs> take that for what it's worth, for sure. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I've only heard good things about Stan Yak, and the fact that you give you throw it back at him is fantastic. Oh yeah, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> so it's I mean, fun. I think that's. I like I think that's great. Oh, yeah, and I'm coloring Shelter Division, too. I forgot about that Yep, one. you do have Shelter Division <laughs> as well. For Bob Sa okay. Also for, for Bob, Bob Sally. Sally. That is correct. Yes, also for Bob. <laughs> yeah. um, How could I forget? Oh, well, I mean, you know, uh, I, I I was going to quiz you, but I didn't give you the test notes before, <laughs> before you kind of jumped in. Um, yeah. Well, let me see. I think I have Shelter division right here with the old source point presses yeah uh, i'm almost positive that i do because i was talking to bob um last week two weeks ago i think bob yeah. was on two weeks ago and uh we were talking about it and now i have all of his stuff up oh good <laughs> at least i, I just went I a... to us i'm in jaffrey new hampshire like it's a tiny town and i went to the local comic shop and i saw uh, randomly i saw a witch hunt and baba yaga there it was the first time i saw my book on display that i didn't put there myself <laughs> so that was a cool moment for me yeah it just happened <laughs> so do you do you push it as well? Like, do you really jump in with like the rest of them and be like, so for bro broken gargoyles, I know Bob hustles, but are you, yeah. are you part of that team? Cause I don't, I usually see the main writer or the main, whoever the main yeah. creator is that kind of came up with that kind of pushing. Are you one of those guys that'll be like, Bob, let's push this. And you just kind of let Stan <laughs> hang, hang out in Russia and you guys actually like kind of go to, go to, go to the wall with it. Uh, I don't go as hard as Bob Sally does. <laughs> it's, 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 it's hard to but, go as hard as Bob. Yeah. But I'll do social media posts for like previews and get other people to go, but I'll go to some shops in New York and ask them to put it in. And if I have extra, I'll ask them if I can put them in on their indie shelves. And usually they'll let me. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. you, well, usually comic shop people are like, yeah, I mean, you're local. Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Like, pop in. <laughs> so I dropped into chat yeah. um, Baba Yaga. I dropped in um, Shelter Division. Let me drop in the old. Let me make <laughs> sure that. Um... The old broken gargoyles. Mm hmm. <laughs> Well, Bro broken gargoyles is on is on promo, so we can't we can't do that one yet. Bro uh, broken gargoyles, 
Uh, was it Broken Gargoyles number one that you launched today? Or was it? Yeah, no? that came out today. One came out today. Yes, one one came out today. Yep. So number one out today, <laughs> Bob. Uh, we were talking about you earlier, Bob, and we, I wanted to congratulate you. Um, and uh, on Broken Gargoyles, that's awesome. And then Jalen, uh, I I did say that. I didn't know that I said that, but I think we both said as hard as Bob and then laughed. So yeah. <laughs> that's that's going to be one for the old uh, – that's going to be the old highlight clip right there of that one. <laughs> Greg, what's up, buddy? Welcome to the show. So, uh, well, listen, man, we <laughs> – I'm not sure. I'm not sure we can really beat that one. To be perfectly honest no. with you. Um, uh, well, listen, do you, and I don't have Bob on, but do you know where people can buy? I guess Source Point Press is the easiest place to buy Broken Gargoyles right now, right? Yeah, on their website. I think it's too late for the previews code. I think you can do number two and number three previews code. Mm -hmm. I don't have those on me right now, but Bob might drop them. If Bob's still in, he might he might have them. Uh, I got yeah. Broken Gargoyles. What? Wait. Oh, wait a minute. All right. Broken Gargoyles number one live today for sale. Let me drop that in the old chat because that's going to be a blockbuster. As um, you know, yeah. so let me ask you one more thing before I let you go. When you get into a title that has a ton of hype around it, like Broken Gargoyles. Like everybody's saying outside of Bob's, so forget Bob Sally even wrote it, and forget that I talked to him <laughs> week and a half ago, and forget that the fact that I'm partners with it, Source Point Press is partners with me. <laughs> um, the hype around Broken Gargoyles has been fantastic. Do you f feel any stress? And this is the same question I asked Bob about trying to make sure everything is perfect because there is such a spotlight on it, or are you just like, just another comic to me, man? I'm gonna do the best I can regardless. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess I'm a, a tiny bit nervous because there's such a demand for it that there's deadlines now that we they got to get out. <laughs> and, um, but sometimes, but yeah, most of the time I just just do my best and hopefully people like it. I mean, it's, it's all, all you can, can. Really do. It's all you can do, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I always take constructive criticism back to improve the product. But sometimes that doesn't come across with Stan. Mm. He'll just say, why did you do that? <laughs> Why'd you make this? <laughs> like, what do you want me to do? It really makes me want to hire Stan. I, I I don't have any comics right now to do, but it makes me want to hire Stan and you just to record the conversations. <laughs> it's all on Facebook Messenger. That's the only way we talk. I've never met him, never heard his voice. <laughs> oh, so you ma you made up the Russian accent with him? Yeah, I just do that in my head when he's when he talks. <laughs> that's fantastic i hope he sees this i hope stan watches yeah. this just because we've talked about him so much and it's funny that nobody's ever heard his voice do, do we know yeah. that his name is stan is it actually stan i think it's stan i don't know it could it could be an alias that's what i'm thinking. either goes by stan or saint yak saint yak i that's how i originally heard of him is yeah. Yak. And then obviously I heard of you. Uh, I'm going to call you the Nuge from now on. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> because that's, that's badass. And if you see me, you yeah. can, you can call me Jeff or you can call me Palumbo. It doesn't matter to me. Palumbo. It's one, it's one of those last names that acts <laughs> that works as a nickname. Yeah. Um, and people I'll probably that, like, Hey, it's you. <laughs> also. I mean, I, I have been called worse to be perfectly <laughs> honest with you. Yeah. Just today, actually. Oh, oh no. <laughs> well, when you deal, when you deal with the public, sometimes, you know, yeah. not a hundred percent of people agree with you. Yeah. And but, back, back to Jalen's point. Nope. I wasn't even talking about politics. When I talk mm -hmm. politics, that's a whole nother kitten caboodle. 
That's fair. Gre- Greg bringing up the Jeffster. Oh God. Uh-oh. The Jefferino. Jefferino. Um, is Greg Wright up in here? Uh, no, it, this is no. Is I don't. I haven't seen Greg Wright in chat yet. This is uh, Greg Gorski, oh, okay. uh, fr- a friend <laughs> of mine popping in. So, well, listen, man. Uh, I told you we That's had to fair. get we had to get fifteen minutes, and we got fifty. That's perfect. So, yeah, I uh, appreciate you staying on with me longer. <laughs> That's fine. I'm having a blast. Um, I would love to have you back on the show, um, yeah. especially if you and Bob and if man, if we could get Stan, could that'd stand. be fantastic. Even if it's could, it's just yeah. a cardboard cutout of him. Yeah, just a picture of him. Mm-hmm. We can get Justin Birch, the letter. Yeah, get Justin in. I think that'd be great, and especially when <laughs> you guys win this next uh, the next Ringo Award or whatever Ooh. it is that you guys that'd are be cool. probably going to be nominated for. I'm, I mean, I'm calling it early. Definitely a nomination. You might have to go up against Frank Gogol and no heroin. Um, no. Yeah. So, Just two good books. Because that's, that's <laughs> going to be tight, too. And then, of course, yeah. you have um, all the stuff that Greg's coming out with and the stuff that Garrett's coming out with. Oh, yeah. So you got Franklin and Ghost to have to, to deal with uh, as well. I mean... Just happy for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then Stephanie with um, with Aeonian. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's so, been nailing that. Mm-hmm. I need to... Uh, let me see if I can drop the link. Before I let you go, I want to see if I can drop the link to Aeonian real quick. Okay. Um, just because I talked to um, uh, Tony today, and I want yeah. to make sure that I can hook her up. She was supposed to be on the show. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, Stephanie Mayer- Maynard is the creator of Aeonian for... Uh, mm-hmm. Rocket Inc. Studios. Yeah. And she was supposed to be on, but she got sick. Uh oh. And it was right during her Kickstarter, too. So I'm like, uh, you know no. what? I'm not going to bother yeah. you. Yeah. Um, Maybe get her on for the next one. She's always welcome. Yeah. <laughs> she, yeah. she is always welcome if she wants. So listen, man, um, thank you so much for being on the show. It was great yeah. getting to talk to you, great getting to meet you. Um, yeah. By all Who's means, it? keep keep giving Stan um, crap, and you know, don't let him push you around. I will. Don't worry. And uh, <laughs> you know, next time you want to be on the show or something's coming up, just ping me and let me know, and I'll hook okay. you up. All right, thanks. Uh, hang on me just one second. I want to say goodbye to you as I'm signing off to everybody else. So hang on line with me real quick. Okay. All right. Later, buddy. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the infamous Robert Nugent. A.K.A. Rob Nugent, A.K.A. Rob N, A.K.A. The Nuge, um, A.K.A. The Colorist of tons of stuff. Currently, Broken Gargoyles being what is out right now and that all the hype is coming from. So um, thank you for his time. Obviously, he was great having on. What a good dude. Um, and only my second colorist on the show ever, uh, So, which is awesome. I love seeing how everybody has such different backgrounds, but we all come together in one thing, and that's to create amazing content with each other. So thank you, everybody else, for uh, coming in. Again, if you're on YouTube, uh, don't sweat it. You know, just look below. The links are all there. You can find all Robert's stuff. It's not like it's going anywhere. Um, and if you like it, buy it, because that helps out him, plus it helps out the creators, helps out the publisher, and um, that's how these guys make their living. So make sure you hook them up. Um, read the stuff that's on finnewis.com that's there. You'll have those links as well. Everybody that's here live, thank you so much for hanging out. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. You are the best. Uh, we are potentially going to take a break on Sunday. Um, I was going to, and then somebody sent me a note, and they're like, hey, do you have time? And I'm like, eh. So Sundays and I I don't know what's going to happen with Sunday. Um, But regardless, have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy yourself. We'll talk to you soon. And again, keep supporting those comics. Have a great night.